basketball is like martial arts is the Basketball is exactly like Kung Fu or any other martial arts, and here's 10 reasons why. If you're saying that basketball is exactly like Kung Fu, is that why Chinese people like it so much? Possibly. We're here with Nelly Chan, former pro basketball player, to come talk about how basketball is just like martial arts. This is something I've realized, and David, I can't unsee it now that I've seen it. You talked about it with Vince Carter. Nell, have you ever thought of this before? Uh, a little bit, yeah, but it's, you know, finally crazy to, you know, actually break it down. Let's just play some of Nell's clips to build up some credibility here. And the Kongqiu. Wow. He beating the Kongqiu. You can really know that he's a fan of his. And we can see the third round of the third round. Wow. All right, everybody, starting off with the number one reason why basketball is like martial arts is the aerial acrobatics and graceful movements. Everybody knows that jumping high and leaping in the air, doing layups and dunks and contorting your body is a huge part of basketball and got to have that aerial ball control, right, when you're doing that. But actually, man, that like... I want to say it started with martial arts. Would you say that it's specifically more like Kung Fu or Wushu or Wing Chun, even maybe more than Taekwondo? Because Taekwondo and karate are a little bit more like stiff. Like choppy. And yeah, stuff. choppy. Yes. So when you watch the highlights of like the Taekwondo or karate like demonstrations, they're more spinning kicks, which there's some of that in the NBA, but really you're not kicking. You're really spinning your body doing 360. So a lot of like Wushu, even... I'm just going to throw it out there. Ribbon dancing. Bro, is that why Koreans and Japanese prefer soccer to basketball? But Chinese, since Kung Fu is more similar to basketball, like basketball more. Oh. That but anyways, guys, as you can tell through these clips, like you want to be graceful. You want to be athletic. You want to jump in the air and drive a lot of power from the ground. I mean, listen, there are countless clips I can go to. I'm just going to show all these basketball clips of these spin moves in basketball. Derek Rose, he always looked like he was flying through the air doing some uh, hidden tiger, crouching tiger, hidden dragon stuff. So do we have to be clear here that players like Kyrie and D Rose that are particularly graceful but Kyrie on the ground, D Rose in the air. They play more kung fu style than like Westbrook or LeBron. I would actually say Westbrook, I would put him up in there for some of his spin moves. But yes, LeBron is considered a little less graceful. I would definitely say like a Kobe or Ja Morant, Derrick Rose would and Kyrie would exemplify this. DeMar DeRozan is pretty graceful too. Oh, yes. Underrated. Underrated. You know, John Wall. You know, those type of players. Basically, anybody who can do a really smooth 360 layup, that's essentially yep. who I'm talking about. For me, I totally see what you're saying in the sense that, like, Wushu is all always defined by its gracefulness. Mm -hmm. And so is, like, certain players are yeah. hyper graceful. Yeah, and you have to understand, listen, in basketball... It's unlike soccer, you're using your feet and your hands equally as much. So point number two, you got a lot of free-flowing decision-making and improvisation in the middle of a match or a game. So this is why it's similar to like the UFC. If you think about UFC and MMA, you're like there one-on-one, -on -one. even in a boxing match, you're reading your opponent and you're just making all these decisions on the fly. You can train all the combos you want. Just like in basketball, you can train all the dribble combos, but when it comes down to it and someone's defending you, you will have to improv and make certain movements that you may or may not have trained for. Right, so you're saying that's different than like, say for example, football, which is not very free-flowing because the plays only last like 15 to maybe 20 seconds. Exactly. Exactly. And this isn't just free flowing with yourself, it's free flowing with your teammates. Nelson, you can attest to this. A lot of the times, like you'll have a play in basketball or an offense you're trying to run, but it might get broken, right? Yeah. Like, I think a perfect example, uh, if you guys play the clip, is when Kyrie in USA team practice, when he broke down the full court press, uh, you know, he had to, like, you know, swivel around five, six different people doing different moves because on the type of counters that they throw at him so you got to have to really instinctively make these type of decisions right, right away and there and there was real no way to prepare for that there was yeah. no way to like memorize what he was about to do because yep. the defensive positioning and the schemes it's always so uh every rep is individual right? yeah every yeah. and, rep is and basically just like i mean in anything but in especially basketball and martial arts it's like you train all the moves in the world just so that you can bust it out when you absolutely need to. And you don't necessarily yep. plan for it. You just do it. Yo, Kyrie would be like 
a, a master of all seven styles. He got the crane <laughs> style. He yeah. got the snake style. He yeah. has tiger style. I think between him and Kobe, they are the most masterful, graceful, skillful you know, players. Yes, and Kobe, I'm not going to lie, he takes a lot of mental games from uh, martial arts to a lot yep. of, like, mentality. So we're going to get into that. That's why Kobe had the Bruce Lee collection, yes. right? There, there you go. Fun. We're going to get into go. it. Don't worry. I'm going to give Kobe this flowers. <laughs> we know point number three, reading opponents. This kind of goes on to the fact of, like, you're reading in basketball, like Nelson, right? When you're dribbling down the court or you go on one-on-one with someone, you're, like, reading their feet, reading the body language and the angle and where their hands are and basically same thing in fighting In fighting you're looking at the footing you're looking at the angle you're like okay how do i get this angle on this person so i can strike them this way or how do i do this so i can kick them and in basketball you're just looking for the angle so you can get by them and it's very similar right yeah yeah i mean i would say would you say it's almost like I guess is it similar to, to soccer? Soccer you need to like be predictive too because they say that that's what messi's bet the best at yeah like Messi I, I think, is the best at predicting the scheme before it yeah. happens. Yeah, I think martial arts and soccer obviously have a lot of crossover with the kicking, but I think it's just because basketball, you use your hands just as much no, like as for, your feet. Like, for, ex- for example, if you're guarding me, you have your top foot, you know, on the strong side. I'm going to, you know, attack that top foot, make you shift. Or if you're using your arm to block me off, I could use my hand to, you know, rip through or, you know, swim through. To like you know counter that so exactly like a lot of it is like kind of like fighting like so if I put my hand here you can swipe it down that's right. like a fighting technique yes type. it is and Luka Doncic most famously he's super good at reading the defense reading the footing and here's another thing Nelson is this correct that when you're defending somebody one of the main tactics to defending someone instead of watching the ball is to watch their chest right you watch their body uh, I think there's a diff- uh, there's a lot of different types of techniques some people like to watch the chest some people like to watch their feet some people like to watch their hands. So, like, you know, it, it really, it, you know, there's a lot of different styles. Right, right. I would say, for me, Luca is probably the most predictive player as an offensive player I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Like, in terms of his ability to, like, see the gaps and see what's about to materialize, sometimes yeah. even before the defense yeah. knows that that's what's Yeah, I mean, even in fighting, sometimes if you can read the feet, you can kind of know what they're about to do. Point number four. In both basketball and martial arts, you're using your opponent's weight against them. So in basketball, oftentimes it's like post moves, right? When your back is leaning against them and you have, and you can feel where their body is at, you can do a drop step, you can spin off of them. Jokic most recently pulled the chair on Rudy Gobert using Rudy's own momentum against him and letting him fall into the trap of a travel. So I'm just saying there's so many ways to use your body against each other. And especially in judo, but really all martial arts, you use uh, the opponent's body weight against them. I guess in another sport, in football, when the wide receiver is getting jammed by the DB off the line, there's a lot of grappling too. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can use basically anything that gives you an advantage to get past this person is what you're trying to do. Now, can you speak to at a pro level of basketball, because you played in Asia in the ABL, how much off-ball physicality there is? Because a lot of people, when oh, they play pickup with their friends, it's not like that man. off the ball. They're probably just thinking maybe this on-ball interaction, but off the ball, there's so at, much grabbing, at, right? At every elite level that you know you you level up to, the physicality and you know the the athleticism is just like on another level. So, so what like, is it? Is it so off like ball, when you're like cutting you're... through, they'll literally just throw a shoulder at you. You know, throw an elbow at you or just jam you up yeah. and then like won't let you, you know, cut across, you know, your angles and your lanes. Yeah, um, yeah it's like and, and sometimes that, yeah, if, if you're a shooter, I could be holding you when like the refs is not seeing. It's just a lot, it's, it's very physical, you know, off ball. That yeah, brings and on me ball as well, too. That's a good point. And that brings me to point number five, which is striking. See, a lot of people don't think you can strike in basketball. But let me tell you this. You can but you might get suspended. (laughs) But actually, so striking in basketball, what I would consider it, there's different forms. There's pushing that elbow out so that you can kind of get a a step back, which is legal, but the extension of that is you will get a offensive foul. Or literally, I have like countless clips of NBA players just fighting, Draymond kicking people in the nuts, people tripping each other. There is some striking involved in basketball, but obviously it is illegal. No, a common one is... One is jamming the screen, you know, so you, you would jam the screen before the screen even happens. So, you know, you basically, you run up to the screener and you physically just bump them out of the way, you know, or let's just say boxing out. Boxing out is kind of like striking, right? You got to like find your, you know, uh, defender, mm-hmm. you know, and like, like push him out of the way. 
Right. How much uh str- how much kit is legal now in basketball to like put your elbow out? Because I know that people always debate this. You can, right? I mean, so a common one is like it's very subjective. So as long I feel like as long as you don't extend your full arm, you can strike. So I like to, you know, use my shoulder bump or even like a small little chicken wing. Mm. Like right here halfway, like right halfway, you know, I feel like it's acceptable. But like once you fully extend, obviously, you know, that is an offensive foul. But, you know, it's subjected to the refs. It depends how ticky-tack they want to call it. But Obviously, when you're at uh, certain street ball courts, even have a reputation where, like, the threshold of acceptable physicality is much higher than you play in church league. Church league, you got to put the physicality down. Also, I'll say this. This is uh, an underestimated aspect of strength. I think that this is where the strength comes into play. Like you yeah. said, if you're trying to uh, run the curl and somebody's just like bumping you on the curl, if you're really strong, you'll just be able to go through their arm. Oh, just a oh, simple yeah. hand check. I remember, uh, you know, after playing overseas and coming back home to play with, you know, some of my friends, they're like, damn, Nelly, you actually got like so much stronger. Like your hand check, like I can't even move. Like once you put your hand check on me, but um, that's just how it yeah, is. You know? Your chi got strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, point number six is trapping. Trapping is a form in martial arts, obviously used a lot in Wing Chun as well, but really in MMA as well, where you're pretty much grabbing or grappling an arm, using your off arm or using your arm to gain an advantage. And I would say Kyrie Irving Mm -hmm. is elite at this. Like when he's trying to get past somebody, you can literally see him grab someone's arm, pull them forward just a little bit so it's not an offensive foul, but it gives him that little advantage. I would say Kyrie looks literally like he's doing Wing Chun while he's driving. He's like this all the time, you know, when he's (laughs) dribbling. And and it's almost like his off arm has a mind of its own. Uh Literally, it's like a, like it's got its own AI, like computer chipset. Yeah, I have some really good highlights I'm going to be playing of Kyrie literally grabbing Anthony Simon's hand just and pulling it over just so we can get around him. And that is legal. But I would say that the bigs, it looks more like BJJ. It almost looks more (laughs) like, you know what I mean? Like their grappling doesn't look as graceful as like the pitter patter. Uh, right. Wing Chun style that Kyrie's doing. Right, right, right. Uh, point number seven in both martial arts and basketball, there's tons of trash talking. Guys, Israel Adesanya, famous for this. There's a lot of taunting, even in boxing. There's a lot of flashy boxers that like to dance on people. Who else dances in the NBA, David, that comes to mind? Lance Stevenson. I was just going to say <laughs> that. I was in my mind, I was like, Lance Stevenson, bro. Who's the Brazilian guy who beat Israel? And he he was famous for having that bow and arrow thing that was the same as Jamal Murray. Exactly. So there is a lot of crossover between the celebrations, taunting, trash talking. These are both social things. When you're standing in the ring with someone, you kind of have time to talk to them and like taunt them and kind of get them and play little mental games and talk trash. So I think that's very important. I feel like the MMA fighters, their taunting reminds me more of basketball players, or at least Israel's does, more than uh, boxers taunting. Yeah, I boxers would agree. remind me more of football players. Yeah, and let's say like in soccer, I think there's a little bit of taunting, but very rarely do you have time in soccer to go one-on-one, you know, like for 10 seconds long. Because there's just so many people in the game is, and you're always just running around. But anyways, point number eight, driving power from the ground upward. David, this kind of goes to your point where you're saying if you're very low to the ground and you're very strong, you have strong legs and a strong core, you can push people around. But also you can shoot upward very high like Steph Curry and kind of like driving that power from the ground is the same as martial arts when you're trying to get a kick or like an uppercut off, you know? Uh, So you're saying a floater might be similar to a kick or an uppercut. Yeah, I would say a one-legged floater, when you're jumping off one leg, that's like a flying knee in Mm -hmm. Muay Thai. And then if you're doing like an uppercut, you're driving the power up from your legs just like a shot. Hey, this Uh, is like Draymond. Yeah, Draymond, the flying (laughs) kick. <laughs> Bruce, hey, Bruce uh, Bowen on Wally Zerbiak. Oh, my. The flying kick. <laughs> Yo, that was the face, We got to play bro. that right now. The flying. God. Point number nine. Both basketball and martial arts got crazy intricate footwork. And what I mean by this is that you can shuffle your feet, right? You can do a hesitation. It's all about footwork. You have to have crazy stamina in boxing. That's why they do the jump rope for like 30 minutes at a time in boxing, right? Because Mm -hmm. your calves got to be strong. You're doing a lot of bouncing around. Um, Also, basically, you're footing about like triple threat position. That's like basically a fighting stance. Like when you're jabbing and stuff with your leg, like a, a that's that's fighting. Talk about footwork a little bit, Nell, because I know that I've been noticing on like thinking 
basketball, b-ball breakdown. People have been talking a lot more about footwork nowadays because you know how people just used to think about handles, yep. but handles without the footwork in combination, it doesn't even get you anywhere, right? Yeah, I think you know footwork is a very elite uh, skill that you have to have, whether it's in basketball or you know, or in uh, martial arts. Uh, perfect example, obviously, you guys know Kobe has one of the best footwork. Mm. You know, Hakeem has one of the best footwork, or even in today's time, you know, who has really good footwork is Jalen Brunson. You know, for how Ooh. unathletic he is and for how, you know, uh, effective he is when he strikes, you know, when he drives down the lane and, you know, finishes off his shots. He has really good footwork with his pivots and, you know, his hesitations. You know, that, that, like I said, very extreme skill to have. And I think one of the best examples is there's this uh, white guy who was the number one lacrosse player in American history called Errol Spence, and he made it to the NBA this year, oh, le leaving, the the leaving the lacrosse world, moving into the G League to the NBA. And when he's out there, it looks like he's playing lacrosse while he's in the NBA, but because it's all footwork. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I would say lacrosse surprisingly has a lot of similarities to the NBA as well. Because you're kind of running with the stick and then you do spin moves too and they kind of bump each other. Um, so I, yeah. I would say Jalen Brunson, uh, Chris Chioza, Fred Van Fleet, a lot of the smaller, thicker guys play like they're playing lacrosse a yeah. little bit. Uh -huh. uh, point number 10, training methods. And I think the training methods between martial arts and basketball are similar in the extent that you want to be strong, but you don't want to be bulky. Yeah. So, like, fighters don't really bulk unless they're trying to move up weight classes. And basketball players, I feel like they all want to get stronger, of course, but you don't really want to get too big enough where it starts to affect your speed and agility. Right. right? I mean, is it because in the NFL, sometimes they more bulk? Yes. I feel like in the NFL, it is... NFL requires a lot of the same things, but it's more about like brute strength. No, it's more straight line athleticism. Yes, it's more straight line athleticism. Maybe unless you're a running back and receiver, but everybody else is like you're just you're you're trying to do like one job. But in basketball and fighting, you're trying to do everything. That's why I think a lot of fighters like basketball. David, most notably Roy Jones Jr., Manny Pacquiao, Ryan Garcia. These are famous boxers who like to play basketball. Oh, our, Roy Jones Jr. was nice. Yeah, Roy Jones Jr. is probably like the best. Boxer hooper I've ever seen. No, because he yeah. played summer league NBA. Wait, doesn't Mayweather hoop a little bit? Maybe yeah, like he a tiny. Sucks, yeah, he though. sucks. Though, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mayweather. Well, hoop. no, that because uh, didn't uh, uh, Bone Collector, collector bone killed him? Yes. Yeah, you want to basically in basketball and martial arts, you want to be strong, but not at the expense of being flexible and mobile. I think right? in basketball and martial arts, it's more important to be agile. Yes, you know. And shout out to Pacquiao though. Pacquiao played in the PBA. I believe one game. I, I think he got no, like he extra played treatment. in his own league that he created. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, I literally think they had him in the PBA. No, I think he did for PBL. like a game or two. The PBL. Oh yeah, the, the PBL. PBL. No, I'm not gonna lie. I noticed. Not the PBL. I know that a lot of people were pretty mad about that. They were like PBL fans because they were like, "Why did they let Pacquiao?" Oh, because they just let him shoot. Yeah. yeah. All right. Point number eleven. This is my bonus point. I think at the highest levels, and I've been hearing more and more people talk about it, and especially watching JJ Redick and LeBron's podcast. It's like at the highest levels of martial arts and basketball, when everybody's skill level and the difference between skill levels is razor thin, it becomes a mental game. It's a mental game, mental preparation, yeah. learning how to handle adversity, time management, uh, managing your cortisol, um, imagine, uh, managing your breath work so that you don't get tired. Because you're, you're saying once everybody shot that same jumper 40,000 times, or, or let's just say everybody's practiced that jumper 400,000 times. What separates people? Yeah, right? and of course, there are NBA players that are more skilled. But I'm saying, like, for 50% of NBA players, their skills are, like, pretty similar. Well, they all train 10 hours a day, right? Yes, they all train, and it's like, they can all kind of shoot. They can all well, kind of dunk, jump. Now, what is the mental aspect that separates people? Is it somebody who gets nervous and their performance level goes down versus somebody else who adrenaline their, their adrenaline surges and their performance level goes up? Absolutely. Like, but yeah, they train think, the same. They're I twins. Think, I think in terms of basketball, whether it's basketball or martial arts, I think 50% of the you know, the game is mental. Not, and 50% of it is physical and skill, right? But I think 50% of it is mental because you have to mentally prepare yourself, you know, for the battle that you're about to, you know, enter uh, against your opponents. And if you don't have that mental strength, you it's easy for you to break down. And mm -hmm. once your opponents see that you're breaking down, it's a wrap for you. Right. You know? So you need that mental toughness. Yeah. That's what, you know, what, you know, Kobe... Uh, talks about mental I mean, mm. mamba mentality you know it's a lot of it is mental right Dude, so think about it this way so all the greatest martial artists that we know were philosophers right bruce lee philosopher right like even if you just talk to high level masters of any sport they're like almost philosophical who are the most philosophical in the nba i would say kobe 
Then again, maybe not. It's 3.30 a.m., my foot feels like dead weight, my head is spinning from the pain meds, and I'm wide awake. Forgive my venting, but what's the purpose of social media if I won't bring it to you real, no image? Feels good to vent, to let it out. To feel as if this is the worst thing ever. Because after all the venting, the real perspective sets in. There are far greater issues and challenges in the world than a torn Achilles. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Find the silver lining and get to work with the same belief, same drive, and same conviction as ever. One day, the beginning of a new career journey will commence. Today is not that day. If you see me in a fight with a bear, pray for the bear. I've always loved that quote, that's Mamba mentality. We don't quit, we don't cower, we don't run, we endure and conquer. Kyrie. And Phil Jackson as a coach, Even Kyrie. right? Kyrie's hella philosophical. Kyrie, and Kyrie is super philosophical. And so I'm saying at the highest levels, like you do have to, ha what's that extra edge? It's that mental game. And I think LeBron, although LeBron's game isn't the most graceful and like martial artsy, like, you know, Kung Fu like, but his mental game is like crazy of him ability his ability to predict things and understand schemes and kind of like yo i've seen he seems before. less philosophical in a like a sort of a beard old man on the mountain type of way right though. possibly yeah but uh i will say this to me it's almost like the skill is your and your physicality is what mario kart player you pick you know what i mean you pick toad you pick bowser you pick whatever yoshi and, and your skill in driving in Mario Kart, that's all there, right? But the, the mental aspect could be the power-ups, whether you get a flower or you get, um, hit, a banana, but hit a banana peel on the mm. downside. Yeah. That's the intangible aspects is what you're yeah. referring to, the mental, philosophical, almost ethereal aspect. Yeah, what I love is this quote from Andre Ward, a uh, former boxer. He was saying, uh, I'll just play it right here. So I'm the type that you hit me like that. I'm going to smile at you. I got you. We got another round to fight, sir. So <laughs> my 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 anger, my my get back, I'm gonna get it within the confines of these rules, but you're gonna feel me. All right, everybody, that was the 10 reasons why basketball is a martial art, in my opinion. All right, it's not a martial art, but it's just like kung fu. Uh any other last words, guys? I would say that you have been saying this idea for 10 years. You pitched it to Vince Carter. Vince Carter was the first guy I saw do a dunk and then do like a kung fu stance. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, I think it's more, it, it, as you studied martial arts, did it become more or less true to you? Because you've been saying this even before you studied. It became so true to me, man. And I think initially it was just like, oh, uh, some of the moves that Derrick Rose does in the air reminds me of like some swift like movements from uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. But now that I delve deeper into it of how basketball uses both feet and hand equally as much, like equally as much. Yes, you're not kicking in basketball, but that's pretty much it. You're doing everything. You're doing spin moves for work, hand movements, dribbling. You got to shoot. You got to strike. You got to push. It's just, they're so, it's Yo, just, did you, it's crazy. Did you guys see in Dagestan, Khabib and them playing their uh, like wrestle version of basketball? Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. they mix MMA and wrestling and basketball yeah, that's together? Funny. That That's, it's, hey man, however you want to feel. And then there's all those videos from China of like dudes doing like Kung Fu basketball moves. Oh, and then there's that movie Kung Fu memes. basketball. Yep. There's the movie oh, Kung Fu Sha basketball. Shaolin basketball, right? So trust me, Chinese people have Shaolin been known that basketball was like Kung Fu this whole time. But anyways, guys, let me know in the comments down below what you think about all this. Is my theory true or not? I laid out all the evidence there. The video evidence is there. You tell me what other sport is more like Kung Fu. That, that's basketball. gotta be why Asians like it so much. Cause I but I know obviously the top Asians that love basketball are Chinese and Filipino. Yeah. So those are the two number yeah. one. And, and Filipinos have a very uh popular martial arts too. Anyways, guys, uh let me know in the comments down below. Shout out to Nelly Chan. And uh until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.